Hello everyone, this is your professor, Danny Kabulay, on the course Accounting Information System. And we're talking about chapter 5 now. This is video lecture number 9. So let's talk about computer-based accounting systems. So CBAS technology can be viewed as a continuum with two uh, extremes, automation and re-engineering. So when auto, you mean automation, you use technology to improve efficiency and effectiveness. That means yung system, i-computerize lang natin. For example, from a manual system, you make it uh, computerized. You use uh, tools no, or software. Now, when you talk about re-engineering, you use technology to restructure the business processes and firm organization. That means marami kang babaguhin sa kumpanya, yung mga departments, babaguhin mo, mga forms, and processes. So, re-engineering is more drastic Automation is simply, you know, using technology. Okay? So, pareho naman siyang ginagamitan ng technology. Yun nga lang, mas drastic yung re-engineering kasi even the structure of the organization, you will have to change. Okay? Maybe you will be hiring additional people, you'll be creating a new department, or you will be dissolving old departments. Okay? So, that's the difference between automation and uh, uh, re-engineering. Now, levels of automation and re-engineering ordering no? When you apply this to purchasing, computer generates the purchase requisition. So that means purchases manually generates PO. And then uh, the computer generates PO. No PR needed. The PO not sent until manually reviewed. The computer generated PO or purchase order is automatically sent without manual review. And then electronic data interchange or EDI, computer to computer communication without purchase order. So that means... Uh, you know, there are ways by which you can apply technology. Pwedeng meron pang konting manual intervention, meron naman yung possibility na totally there's no manual intervention. It's really machines na talaga yung nag-uusap. Okay? Now, when you talk about expenditure cycle database, you're talking about several documents. No? You have your master files, nandiyan yung mga supplier master file or vendor master file, accounts payable master file, uh, per, uh, merchandise inventory master file. And then you have what you call transaction and open documents files. So dito nakapaloob naman yung ating mga PO or purchase order files, suppliers invoice, uh, open vouchers, and cash disbursements file. And finally, there could be a whole bunch of other files that you might need like supplier reference and history file, buyer file, accounts payable file. Now, when you talk about computer-based purchases, ngayon kasi yung mga modern purchasing departments, uh, everything they do is paperless now. Halimbawa, nakatanggap sila ng purchase requisition from one department, okay? let's say from the plant. Uh, they will check on the stocks. Tama ba na nag-order pa itong department na to? Baka marami pang stocks. So they will have to compute the economic order quantity and reorder point kung tama. If correct, then they will now look for the suppliers. Meron na ba tayong supplier? If this is a regular item that we purchase, most likely meron na tayong supplier. Pero pag if this is a totally new item, then they have to do canvassing. Magka-canvas sila ng mga suppliers, pagsasubmitin ng mga proposals, ng mga quotation, para makita kung sino ang the best supplier for this new item. Then, pag napili na, maraming paraan bago mapili. No? There are times magsasubmit ng mga samples, ng mga quotations. Pag meron ng napili, then gagawa na ng purchase order. A purchase order is like a contract. No? It's good as a contract. So, technically, pag nag-purchase order ka na, mahirap nang mag-back out. Okay? Uh, you are already giving your commitment to purchase. Okay? It's very difficult to cancel purchase orders. So, purchasing, a computer program identifies inventory requirements. Ano ba yung mga kailangan natin periodically? Kasi yan yung mga bagay na pwede natin gawin on a routine basis. The following methods are used for authorizing and ordering inventories. The system prepares the POs and sends them to purchases for review, signing, and distributing. The system distributes the POs directly to the vendors and internal users, bypassing purchases. The system uses electronic data, 
interchange and electronically places the order without POs. Now, other tasks performed automatically by the computer, updating the inventory subsidiary file from the receiving report, calculating batch totals for general ledger updates, closing the corresponding records in the open PO file to the closed PO file, and then validating the voucher records against valid vendor files. Now, when you talk about computer-based cash disbursements, tasks performed automatically by the uh, computer are the system scans for vouchers currently due. It also prints checks for these vouchers. It records these checks to the check register, and then batch totals are prepared for general ledger update procedure. That means, oras na yung accounts payable mo ay okay na, no? uh, it will automatically uh, produce you know, uh, checks for those vouchers. Okay, so that means uh, uh, the computer actually uh, processes okay, the payments. So slides 24 and 25 simply tells us, you know, uh, the batch purchasing system and the flowchart that depicts that. So study it well. Now, what are the advantages of real-time data input and processing over batch processing? It shortens the time lag in record keeping. Hence, records are more current. It eliminates much of the routine manual procedures such as transcribing information onto paper documents, eliminating much of the storage and shuffling of paper documents. It reduces data entry correction procedures. Now, you could see the re-engineered purchases uh, flowchart in slide 27. Now, let's look at the summary of internal controls needed in the expenditure cycle. So, what are the control points? Okay, so you would see that transaction authorization, uh, segregation of duties, supervision, accounting records, access, and in independent verification are some of the control activities. And uh, the purchase processing system would involve inventory control for the transaction authorization. And the cash disbursement system, it's the accounts payable that authorizes the payment. Now for segregation of duties, inventory control uh, separate from purchasing and inventory custody. That means yung tao na uh, bumibili ng item, hindi dapat siya yung warehouse man. Kasi kung siya yung bumibili, tapos siya rin yung warehouse man, meron siyang complete control of the purchasing transaction. The warehouse man is supposed to check if the purchases are correct. Okay? Pero pa, paano kung siya rin yun? E di, chinecheck niya yung sarili niyang trabaho. So, walang segregation of duties pag ganun. Pagdating naman sa cash disbursements, the person recording the payment should be different from the one preparing the check. Okay? Kasi kuminsan, pwedeng magkaroon ng hocus-pocus. But, you know, in smaller companies, it's not a trust basis. Maaring isang tao lang lahat ang gumagawa niyan. Okay? Now, when you come to supervision, it's the receiving department that uh, supervises the purchase transaction. Access, the security of physical assets, limit the access to the accounting records uh, that were mentioned previously. Okay? That means kung sino yung uh, in charge sa custody ng inventory should not be the person who's also in charge of uh, monitoring the, the, the books. Okay? They are, these are two different things. Okay? Now, you can also have accounts payable, reconcile, secure documents before liability is recorded. General ledger reconciles overall ac accuracy process. Okay? Now, when it comes to cash disbursement system, proper security over cash. No? Limit access to the accounting records. Find review. The final review of uh, cash disbursements Overall reconciliation by the general ledger and periodic bank reconciliation by the controller. Bakit importante po yung bank reconciliation? Kasi makikita mo yung mga outstanding checks na inisyo mo sa mga suppliers. Okay? Kasi pag uh, mga long outstanding checks, medyo something that will raise questions. Okay? Now, the general internal controls basically are organization controls, 
mainly segregation of duties, documentation. So everything should be black and white. Everything should be put in writing. And the filing system should be organized. Asset accountant accountability controls, management practices, data center operations controls, authorization controls, and access controls. So basically, these are the general internal controls. Now, when you talk about authorization controls, no, who will you give access to a particular transaction? Sino yung mag authorize Sino yung authorized to perform it? Purchases of inventory should be authorized by inventory control department, not by the purchasing agents. Okay, uh, uh, Accounts payable authorizes the payment of bills, not the cash disbursements clerk. Okay, Who merely writes the checks? Siya lang yung nagsusulat ng check eh. Okay. Then, computer-based authorization controls. Authorizations must be autom automated. Mas maganda yon para walang manual intervention. Program decision rules must be debugged. Automating, that means yung kung ano yung magiging decision, it's the computer who makes the decision already, not, no longer people. Okay? Automating inventory in EDI and JIT. JIT means just in time. Faulty inventory model can lead to over-purchasing or under-purchasing. Cash disbursements may automate check, printing, and signing. That means it's the computer that prints out the checks already. It's automatic. Programming logic must be flawless. Automated signing only below a dollar threshold or a peso threshold. But take note, no? yung automated uh, check printing kasi it only works if you are a company that does not have any cash flow problems. But when money is very tight, you have to do payments priority program. So, hindi ka basta-basta automatic nagpiprint ng checks. Or kung magprint ka man ng check, you don't release them until you've seen the cash position of the company. Okay? Now, let's try to look at your video lecture question number 9. Here's a case study. A commissary is a large facility that doubles as a warehouse for receiving and storing inventories and as a production area for manufacturing or to process the products of a company. Let's take the case of a particular brand, Max's Restaurant. Remember the chicken, the fried chicken restaurant? They have three huge commissaries, one in Quezon City, one in Taguig, and one in Paranaque. You see, in companies like that, with a huge warehouse, huge factory, pilferage is quite common. And pilferage by numerous employees has been rampant recently. Ninanakawa nila ang company. Now, I want you to enumerate the top three internal controls you would like to suggest to management para mawala na yung pagnanakaw ng mga empleyado. Okay? So, write it down in the comment section. Okay? If you're not sure that you are able to, you know, uh, uh, bring to your answer, you may want to take a screenshot and send it to my um, Facebook uh, messenger to be sure. Okay? So I'll see you around in video lecture number 10. Okay? Bye!